Grand School, what is up? This is Pocket Air. I am back to you with the Building a Bankroll series. We've got four tables of 10 and L running as we speak. And yeah, we're going to try to have some fun, talk about some good hands. And uh, on table four down here, looks like I've got a. Uh, I'm not sure what type of player he is. Kind of turned out to look a little fishy. Uh, I had Queen, so obviously I'm betting for some pretty big value. Uh, until I know more about the player, it looks like he's going to have a pretty wide range, and I'm going to be able to capitalize. I think his calling range is essentially going to be anything that uh, any made hands that he has on that board. So I'm not I'm not going to you know play the old. He's only going to or uh, uh, I'm going to fold out his entire range by betting too big. Um, game plan. I'm just going to try to maximize my profits. So here we have two over cards uh, against a fishy player. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make a two-thirds C bet with our two over cards and hope to improve. Uh, when the nine comes off, um, I don't think it's really going to be profitable for us to double barrel. Um, yeah, I think I think he's going to just continue to call with all our made hands. So I'm going to check and hopefully to see a uh, hopefully see a cheap river card, uh, like an ace. Uh, and now I think we'll just take our king high uh, to the river. And if he bets, he has a made hand here, and we'll just we'll just go ahead and fold out. Uh, if it was a different opponent, maybe sometimes I bet the ace there. But this guy, I just don't think I have any fold equity. Um, so here, because we've got a whale here and a, another guy that's uh, a bad player that opened, I'm going to go ahead and flat in position with 6-10 suited. Not a very good hand, but uh, I don't mind this going multi-way. Just keep it cheap unless this nitty guy over here uh, rebumps it. But uh, just trying to just trying to get in there and make something happen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bet on table 3. Um... Uh, this guy bumps it, and um, he is pretty short. Uh, it's definitely pretty dry. Jack's gonna beat us. Uh, I think until I know a little more about this guy, I've only got one hand on him. I'm gonna go ahead and fold here uh, with our king ten. It is a dry board, so that definitely puts a lot of a lot more draws in his in his uh, his raising range there on on the flop. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Yesterday I recorded with Damon, I recorded the... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump this on table two. Uh, turn it into a three-bet bluff. Uh, we're in position, so I don't need to make it quite that big. Uh, but this guy seems pretty nitty. I think he's going to be hit the widest part of his range. He's going to be in a small blind. If he re-raises, we'll just fold and probably really tighten up our three-betting range. Uh, when he flats, though, I think the ace isn't a bad card because I think... I think a lot of his range is going to be, you know, King Jack, stuff like that, that are going to have a pretty hard time continuing, so I'm going to fire once and then just give up. Uh, obviously, when he flats there, he really condenses his range. Um, so, here... Uh, I was paying so close to this hand, uh, attention to the hand up top, I actually, uh, I think I ISO'd. And this guy bets out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call one since I'm getting, you know, multi-way. And if I hit a king or a jack against these two, I, I think it's going to be uh, definitely live most of the time. Um, and, jeez. Uh, I got a good price on the flop, and I'm getting a good price now, but um, at this point, I think I'm going to. Um, I'm thinking about this. Yeah. I mean, 12% and still not quite getting that. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold out. Uh, these players, I am going to be a lot more 
So we, we basically had one live out there. I, against these players, I am going to play a lot, uh, you know, wider calling range, just knowing that if I fight ISO with a, with a uh, kind of, I don't know if you want to call it condensed or thin value range type hand like King Jack, that uh, most of those, most of those uh, top pairs that I make are going are gonna to win me a lot of money. Um, so this is the same guy. So far he hasn't folded too much, but I think uh, him being who he is, he's going to have a very wide flatting range in the button, and the king hits us. Uh, he raises again. Um, this guy's raising quite a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and peel one, see what he does. Uh, he could be being absolutely very honest here. Uh, and... Yeah, so he is. Uh, so, uh, and that's important to note. Um, even with a second pair hand, it's just uh, this guy. It noticed he also checked back the river when the board got scary. So he's just being straight up honest, and we need to uh, we need to eliminate our the bluff catching portion of our range against him. These are the players that, and I say this even after I lost some money there, that we just absolutely love to play against, so I'm thrilled. Uh, and here, uh, yeah, I'm just going to fold out on table two. Uh, the only reason I did is I, I just think this guy's calling anything. This Augie guy on table two. which is obviously good in situations like this. Um, and then, obviously, King High, I can go ahead and fire once. I, I, don't, I don't think I need to make it as big against this guy. He's really not looking at my bet sizing, so... Uh, I'll just go ahead and fire once and uh, kind of evaluate what he does. And now that we pick up some, some equity, uh, I, can, I can fire again. As a as a semi bluff, and when the three rolls off, I think this is one of those situations where uh, this guy has eights, nines, whatever. Uh, maybe he hit a seven here, and he's he's just probably going to call it down. And then here on table two, we're going to go ahead and ISO. Uh, and then our friend comes along who uh, likes to. Most likely flat anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this guy bet his entire range into me on table four. Our fives are vulnerable, but not like a, having a pocket pair here. We, we still have some outs to improve, and uh, we just don't have the equity against crazy up here to continue on table two. So, yeah, our range is looking pretty condensed right now, but I think, uh, especially on this board, our fives are going to be good most of the time now. Um, and against this guy, I'm going to bump it by, uh, to about 35 with our kings because he likes to call so much. Um, so normally I open this, but uh, with this guy here... I'm going to go ahead and fold the, the weaker portion of my, my opening range on the button. And uh, obviously this hits our range pretty good, so the C bet's definitely warranted. Um, and this guy does fold a lot so far, so uh, I don't think there's any more value to double barreling, especially when a 4 rolls off. If he checks again, he's pretty condensed, and um, I don't know. It, he, I mean, I think there's some 6s, but there's also some queens, so I think... Uh, even though we're going to get called by everything, there's still just as much that beats us. Uh, and he actually had ace-five, so that's great to know, and we can really play against that, so maybe there's more thin value to be had against him on the river um, because he has such a wide calling range. So we get three bet, uh, king, jack, offsuit. This guy's in position on table three, and we, we really don't have... Uh, enough hands on him to know how wide he's 3-betting, and King Jack out of positions is not going to play that well, uh, especially if this guy's as tight as he's looking so far. 
So that's just a fold. Uh, I'd rather play a hand there like 7-8 uh, suited, where I'm not going to be dominated against a tight opening range. Well, what looks to be tight now, that could completely change. Uh, here on table 2, if this guy checks, I'm going to go ahead and bet. I just, I, I mean, I just think he's betting any card that hits that board, especially a 63-33. So, pretty cool. We only have one fast table. Uh, I think the action is, is actually perfect right now. Probably exactly where we want it. Uh, so, this guy opens 25. We have 10-7. We're out of position. This guy will probably call, so I'm going to go ahead and sneak in. Again, just looking to hit big, multi-way. Um, this guy looks pretty vulnerable up here. He's pretty passive, uh, so when he opens, he's probably got a bigger Broadway, or maybe a uh, what's what's going to turn out to be an overpair type hand on on the flop. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call here with our six four suited in position, and just look for something uh, like a board like this where where I have some equity uh, and and when he checks I can go ahead and and uh, bet for uh, as a semi bluff, but still make the the best hand a lot of the time or some of the time unless I get raised. But so uh, is the king a good card? Uh, I don't think it hurts, but when, when this guy bets out for pot, um, I mean, I, gonna be right. If if this was a bigger flush, I'd call here, but you know, he's gonna have some semi-bluffing hands there too, and I don't want to end up with the, uh, with a second nut flush there or a second flush there. And this guy bets out now on the river. Um, I still think it's fold against uh, against what I what I know of his range so far. Uh, maybe that's close. I didn't really have a ton of time to review that because the other hand that was going on. Um, and I think this is an okay spot just to bump it up and ISO repping a bigger hand against this weaker player. And uh, you know we can we can rep king. So we've just got a ton of fold equity on this flop. Uh, and we don't have to make it too big because we've got so much equity. Um, and this guy bets out. Uh, I think I'm just going to call and kind of see what he does on the river. And I, I don't know anything about this guy. He hasn't opened a hand yet. So if he bets again... I, d I don't know what he would just donk out with, uh, obviously aside from a 10, or maybe he picked up some kind of flush draw. Uh, but uh, I just I don't. This is really awkward. I don't know what I'm beating here uh, when he plays like this. Uh, I think he almost always has a 10, and this might sound ultra nitty. But the way he played this and the line he took, uh, I'm actually going to kind of make a hero-ish fold there. Uh, again, if I had some prior read, I could put him on something else. But there, I mean, when he donks big like that and then bets the flop pretty big, it's uh, it's either some kind of... Yeah, I mean, look at this guy's just... He looks really passive so far. So when, when he plays like that, it... Uh, it just really screams strength. And I I mean, if I even had some room to maneuver there, it would be one thing, but I really don't because a 10 beats me, a, uh, <laughs> a 10 beats me, um, you know, obviously queens, which maybe he flats. I don't know, I just, I don't think I'm getting away with a lot there. So against this guy, I still think we have some value room. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on betting our ace, our ace nine off. 
Um, and I think that bet size was fine. Here, just obviously, just calling G pot on table four. This guy's really weird. Uh, either he's a maniac, or he thinks that this is a good bet size whenever he has a, whenever he hits the board. Um, so, obviously, with our four two, we're just folding. Uh, if he's really asking for like hands that just destroy him to to re-raise or call there. Uh, so, I think in that against this guy, we just have a lot of hands that uh, uh, that when we make two pair and stuff, we can we can stack them. And at these stakes, yeah, there's, you know, there's some reason to be uh, a bit balanced against maybe some of the really, uh, maybe, I don't know if you want to call them solid regs, but some of the regs, but at the same time, we're just, you know, we're out to exploit and make some money. Um, obviously, at higher stakes, I wouldn't just flat some of those hands I was uh, to, to sneak into a pot. It's just way too exploitable. Uh, so I think this is an okay spot just to go ahead and squeeze on uh, table one with our king nine we got a nice blocker and uh, I think it'll play okay here we need a bet because it's uh, way too dry um, I don't so that guy calls uh, still a lot of draws out there um, and when the ace rolls off I just I think I think he raises most of the time, and I'm gonna bet again because, uh, you know, if we get raised, we can st think of folding. But uh, yeah, how he's playing that, I, I just think there's a ton of room to uh, to be profitable. And again, I'm kind of so I three bet call. It's kind of a hard one for me to see that, and I'm just going to fold out there. Um, oops. And I missed the see bet here, but this is really good because I think this guy's, uh, I think this guy's definitely, uh, you know, playing pretty wide. And with our top pair, I'm going to go ahead and throw that into our raising range. Um, And I'd be really curious to see how he plays an over pair here. That's really the only thing I'm afraid of. Uh, so he jams. Uh, kind of an awkward situation. Um, let's see. You might be saying, well, maybe that was a bad hand to, to raise. But it uh, draws out. Not really. Um... Yeah, I, I think a fold's okay there against this guy. He's he's playing pretty straight up. Uh, I think I ran into uh, an over pair of hand that that he that he had there. So yeah, I guess I could have flatted to try to. I, I mean, the thing is, he's just not betting very big. So uh, the queens and stuff that I do beat, I'm not going to get a lot of value from. And this is just a check now after this guy calls a uh, pretty dry flop. And he calls down with twos. Ooh, still giving these guys too much credit. All right, so we have some back doors. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see that. Uh, obviously, A sets are range pretty good on table one. Man, if this guy just had some room, but he's only, I mean, he's only betting the river very seldom. Um, and he actually folds versus a raise a lot. Uh, for Well, I don't want to say a lot, but when he, when he has hit a, uh, when someone has raised against him, he's folded, so. Um.
Uh, and I'm just going to check this back on table two. This guy I don't have any fold equity against. And I think our king jack, if he doesn't bet here, I'm going to go ahead and bet. Uh, yeah, so lots going on. Uh, we've been we've been in some pretty cool hands, I think. Um, this one was definitely odd with the ace queen. It's uh, it just I don't think I had any room to to call that river bet when he bombs it like that. I think this guy's very very ABC. So uh, again, I I still think there's room in raising the flop though because otherwise I'm going to end up getting uh, if I the hands that I am beating I'm going to get to the river with and have. Uh, which is, I think, a lot of hands. I'm going to get to the river and have, uh, you know, essentially win a small pot. Let's see. Uh, so this guy, three bets in position on table three. And I'll be really curious to see. Yeah, so he just folds. So I think he's just, you know, uh, not the, very ABC, I guess I'll say it, uh, to put it nicely. I'm hoping to get a couple more hands. Anyway, like I was saying before, uh, I met up with Damon yesterday. We recorded the third episode of Range vs. Range. Pretty cool stuff. I think you guys will get a lot out of it when that video does come out. Um, of course, it's going to come out before this one. So, I guess I should say I hope you guys got a lot of out, uh, lot out of it. Uh, and that guy left, man. These are the guys right here, these ABC players that are actually really good to play against. Uh, the guys that turn their hands face up like that. That is too bad that he left. I mean, yeah, fish are even better than these guys, but these guys are the next best thing. Uh, and maybe I'm, I don't, I don't mean to say ABC, but maybe uh, what I mean is uh, definitely players that. This is interesting. So I get three bet by a guy who never three bets, and I get cold called by a fish. Uh, I'm in position. I think I'm gonna make a hero fold here on on table three because I just think I'm never ahead of this guy's range with a hand like Ace Queen. And we get Jack, so this is a good C bet here. Uh, ooh, multi way. I'm actually going to check it multi. Uh, so, this guy shows up with Ace 10. So, and now that we know that, we can, uh, you know, we can throw that into his 3 betting range. Definitely calling one on table one against this guy. Uh, I think him being in position, he's likely to bet a wide range. Uh, when he checks, yeah, if he checks back, I think I almost always have the best hand. I 
and um, so what, what was I? What was I talking about? Yeah, so this guy, pretty interesting. I mean, he's got a very tight three bat, so maybe he's getting a little bored or something like that. Uh, if the fish had more money, by the way, if the fish was fully stacked, I definitely, uh, definitely make that call. And this guy didn't actually. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Yeah, now we can just fold. Definitely calling one with uh, with our no kicker second pair of hand. But uh, when he bets again, I'm just gonna fold it out. This guy hit quads. Ah, this fish is gonna blow up. Oh, he's not. He's a he's a good he's a good sport fish. Uh, so what's going on here? So this guy isos a fish. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna go ahead and three bet out of position. Uh, here this guy looks weaker on table four. I'm gonna invite him to come along with our nines, and uh, this guy's range is still gonna be pretty wide, so I think we can hang on on a lot of flats even out of position with our nines. We'll see. We'll see how he plays it. And he bets 60. He does see bet a lot. I'm going to go ahead and call one. I think he's got a very wide flop continuation range. Uh, the king. Obviously, we don't want to see any over cards. But. If he was opening with a with a weaker hand, I think he slows down. And when he continues, uh, he usually lets off the gas a little bit on a turn. Um, I think I think we're behind the majority of time now, so I'm just going to fold out. Uh, and if we didn't have this weak player behind us, I'd probably just uh, three bet those nines in the in the small blind. It's uh, it's pretty hard to be profitable in a small blind. Actually, I actually rather have more of a linear range in the, or a condensed range in the in the small blind. I think. Um, so this guy three bets. Uh, don't. I think we're heads up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call that. And then he checks, and I'm gonna go ahead and check back. And the jack is a good card for us. And. See if we can't get him to call with his weaker tens. And we did. Pocket nines. All right. So we got a bunch of different player types. I like this. Um, tables look good, and I'm I'm actually playing pretty damn wide, uh, just because I think there's so many places I uh, to exploit against these players that uh, it's just awesome. And so this guy had pocket nines. We saw him three bet with that. Uh, pretty interesting. So if he's holding on to pocket nines, I think we can uh, we can make a lot of money if he hits a queen here. Bingo. Man, it's like a storybook. I have a two-year-old, and it's like reading him one of his picture books. Oh. Uh, for this price, I think I'm gonna call from the big blind against this guy. He's he's not the best of player, so I know that if I if I pick up some equity, he can make some mistakes, and I I think this is enough equity just to call. Um, and I mean we've got outs to two pair, we've got outs to a backdoor, got outs to a uh, 
It's interesting. So unfortunately, we're not going to get paid here. And I'm still going to bet big so that he calls with uh, whatever, you know. He's probably got a really wide calling range. So I think betting small in that case is a is a mistake. Uh, in position with queen nine, uh, I'm just going to bump it. I mean, bad players, right? So, I should say aspiring poker players. Uh, this is a great spot just to, just to bump it. Uh, yeah, and I think this guy's, I, I don't know too much about him, but... Uh, yeah, he just flats it. And this is a, it's a pretty good flop for us. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and fold to a raise. This guy is just terrific. I hope he stays. So you guys didn't anticipate any heads up action, especially in a building a bankroll series, but here we are. So so this is a this is a flop and this is a hand where I against this guy is just totally a fold. I'm not gonna fold too fast because it's gonna it's gonna make him wanna, you know, always just mash that bet button, but uh it's definitely a fold. And then we pick up equity here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet, pretty big. Uh maximize our fold equity against this guy and uh, unfortunately nothing comes in. And now we can just check it back. And he calls down with his studly pocket fives. But that doesn't mean semi bluffing's ever wrong there. It's uh I still think it's good. Especially when he has that wide of a calling range. I mean that's freaking awesome. Um so when he uh, we open, he checks, uh Got some over cards. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this hand in my checking range. I think uh, our two overs in the checking range and kind of see what he does. And then I don't remember what happened. Why do I keep doing this? I opened. Uh, I'm gonna make one big bet into this with our with our vulnerable hand. And uh, uh, there are some draws. So and, and this guy sucks. So. A 10 comes off. Uh, I don't think that changes too much. Um, I think I'll call whatever this guy has. Uh, I, I'm thinking of a draw. I'm just going to check call. I, I, I don't know. That might be a mistake. Um, I'm just hoping that he jams the entirety of his range. And that's a really interesting bat size. I mean, essentially, whatever I do here, I'm getting it all in. Um, I mean, if I call. Otherwise, it's a fold. And it's it's a little weird because I open. Uh, the, only, the only one I think the calling is letting him induce everything. So we had the same hand. Uh, or, I'm sorry, is letting him uh, go ahead and call everything. And then, obviously, with the 8s here, we'll just make the call. Uh, there's no need to get fancy against this guy either. Like, here, I'll just fold 8s uh, because I know that we can... Uh, I'm not looking for small edges. And no sense in, we just don't have the equity, the continuation on table two. I think this hits their range better than it does ours. In uh, pocket sixes, um, again, keeping this as part of my checking range. Uh, point being is against this guy who I don't know how often he's going to fold. My sixes are not going to gain equity. And I'd rather just get him to show down until I bink like a, like a badass like that on the river. And uh, 
hopefully he had some here. And, and now I can, uh, now maybe I'll just over bet or something like that to, uh, to make him not believe me. And then maybe get called by his sevens or something. Uh, so what happened here? Did we... Yeah, we opened... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fire into the ace. I'm going to raise this up. On table one with our ace-king. We totally miss. This guy flats. This guy definitely has a, uh, a pretty cap range when he, when he flats like that. Um, why is the fast table the one that's heads up? That sucks. And I'm just going to check this. Uh, I, I think this... I actually think this hits him pretty good. And now with Ace-King, we just... Uh, against his checking, his check back range, we have some pretty good equity. Alright, so we, we probably have another, I don't know, 5-10 minutes to go, so hopefully we get some more good hands. I think this has been pretty action-packed, though. A lot of interesting stuff happening. Uh, so he fires into me on this, on this pretty dry board. really weird size. That makes me think he's holding on to one. Like, oh, what? So he bets again. Oh, I think I'm going to call this for this price because this guy's taking some weird lines and playing heads up with them. Yeah, so he hit his flush. So it makes a little more sense. I think his line makes a lot of sense there. I think he was being very honest. Uh, he's ba basically betting with equity. Either a seven on the flop or some kind of flush. Uh, he misses most everything else. So again, pretty cool. Another another very honest player. And here, hopefully, our queen high comes through on table two. And this guy's calling 73% of his hands now. Uh, oh, never mind. That's stupid me. We were playing heads up. I still think he was fairly high before that. I don't know how high, though. Yeah, never mind. That was, that was dumb. I just sat here and played heads up with him for that long, and then... That just shows that uh, tea is not as good as coffee. And I don't know what's going on with this guy and I. And I'm sitting here checking down. I think I'm not paying uh, as much attention as I should because I think there's a lot of opportunities there to just steal those pots. So, again, these guys are so honest. Watch if a bet comes off. One of these guys has a, a pair there. Opening nines from the button against the two fish on table two. And if this is checked me, I'm betting on table one. Uh, so we get three bet here against this guy. Um, I'm going to call. I mean, uh, I really thought this guy would come too, but uh, he didn't. Um, pretty dry flop. <sighs> does this guy continue? Quite possibly he does, but I think we have the best hand all the time, almost all the time, <laughs> till he raises there. So when he raises, um, 
I mean, I'm not going to improve all that often. Ah, damn it. I wish I had more time. Let's see. It's river bed. What is his river bed? Uh, what is this raise? So he folds, folds versus a raise quite often. His check raise is... I only have four. I can't even go off that. And crazy passive down here is uh is uh blowing it up so I'm just gonna get out. So that's interesting. This guy checked and then raised uh so depending on his future play we can kinda determine how how wide his check uh his check raise range is. I'm not here to gamble, so I, I think with nines, if, if we had something that had some more realizable equity down down the road, then we could definitely uh, take a shot at uh, calling there for that price. But with nines, it's just so dangerous to play a cap range like that. All right, so we got another five minutes. So I need to focus on this table up top, table two, and uh, it's going so fast because it's on fast that I'm not. Uh, I don't think I'm making the most optimal decisions. Um, easy call against this guy with our jack eight, and easy fold to any kind of continuation bet. And it's just not enough. I mean, we got one back door, but. Uh, so, I think he still has a lot of draws that he could be doing this with on table one. Uh, nines are a possibility, but I'm going to go ahead and make the call. Uh, King's obviously not a good card. He just snap checks, so I think this guy was always on a draw. I think this guy, by not raising, uh, has some like eights or a, a ten in his range. So I think checking could be the best when the king rolls off, and I think we could be good a lot. And we were. And what did that guy have? Jack. Six. Okay. Well. Uh, so when he checks, I'm going to go ahead and bet this. And, uh, yeah. So I think he was just being an honest. A nice, honest person before. And this guy, uh, for 20 cents, even though he's not fully stacked, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and call this. And just uh, stack him if I hit a five and get the hell out if I don't. And, uh, I mean, uh, East 9 sometimes here is, a, is an okay squeeze, but just don't have the full equity that we need uh, with these with these whales in the hand, and obviously it's not strong enough to flat from the small blind or uh, from the big blind even. Get Ace King off on table four. Ooh. Fish gets stacked by the nitty player. On table one. I don't know if that was pre. I think that was post flop, but I'm not sure. Uh, so we get under the gun open. Uh, the guy's 20%, so this plays really well against that range. Uh, so I think here we're just going to go ahead and 3 bet. Um, three bet and uh, kind of combine our fold equity with with his. So so when he flats, um, now yeah, he could be flatting with like nines, maybe eights or something like that. But he's also going to flat with a lot of Broadway hands. A really uh, again a really condensed range. So I'm going to go ahead and fire. And yeah, I mean it's kind of what I expected. He just totally missed the flop. Uh, and 
Uh, I can, essentially there, even though I missed that flop too, I can ref a lot more made uh, over pairs. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, it, it's been fun, and I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I, I do need to update the blog. Haven't done it in a little while, but uh, uh, I still hope you guys are following around. So here are two overs. Uh, this guy bounces out for two-thirds, essentially. And I'm going to go ahead and call because we have backdoor possibilities plus overs. I think he has just enough to, to warrant it. Uh, do I have, is there any reason for me to bump this? And th since these guys are pretty, you know what, I think I'm going to, I'd rather this go multi-way. I think I'm going to sneak in. Uh, interestingly enough, this guy checks, but I still think, I still think we, you know, we're just, I think all he's calling all his catchers. And we chop. Uh, when that guy's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and bet. And yeah, there we go. Uh, and then he just insta folds. Yeah, so the play on table four is one of those where when I have zero fold equity against a guy and I have pocket fours where when I, when I ISO, it's kind of a silly ISO because I'm always going to miss. I'd rather have like king, you know, king jack or something like that to ISO with. And uh, I'm okay with more people coming along. And if one does like re-ISO me, then, you know, whatever. The fish is still calling. It's a... Uh, it's a uh, it's a bigger pot, but I'm already playing fitter fold. Um, so uh, I kind of make those plays sometimes when there's a lot of bad players. And this is another funny situation. I have nine ten, but for twenty cents more, I'm, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna try to pick up some uh, a flop where I can where I can continue on like this one, um, and uh, I guess the question would be, do I have fold equity here? I don't know. Uh, I don't have any hands on this guy, but he's given me a pretty good price to where I can call one. So it's either raise or call one, and I'm just going to call one. Uh, and now that we have the uh, the other nuts, uh, you know, we can get the rest of his money. And I, I think he essentially has to just get it all in now. Don't pair. There we go. Uh, and I'm going a little over, but we keep getting some good hands, and I know you guys like watching these as much as I do. So here on table two, I go in flat, uh, king-queen against uh, a fairly tight guy, I think, um, but I think this will play just fine. Uh, I think he'll... So he bets once and kind of gives up. He folds to a lot of raises. And what better board to raise on? And if he doesn't fold, we just get the hell out. Um, and interesting that he just calls. When he calls like that, it makes me think he... Well, either he has a made over pair, uh, but I think there's a lot of broadways in his range as well. And now we're just giving up. He... Uh, he called it and didn't fold, and uh, we're just getting out of it. And, that, and he checks again. And this sucks because this is telling me his his range is so condensed here that uh, you know we're gonna be looking at tens or eights or something like or sevens or something like that. Yeah, there we go. So that sucks, but I, I probably I probably should have bet there. I should have bet on that. Uh, man, I can't believe he called that with sevens. I, I should have bet that that river. I th I think if there's if there's a possibility, does he fold a lot of rivers? He folds versus a raise, and he didn't fold there. So that's really interesting. His raise, uh, basically his calling range against this is just check raise. 
or is it? No, it's not. But it's really interesting that he calls sevens there. So it sucks because I put him on the exact range. I just didn't have quite enough confidence if I blasted the river that he'd fold. And, you know, sometimes uh, at these stakes, you know, they're just not going to fold. They're not... Um, so I, I could see it going either way. I think it was really close. It sucks to know exactly, you know, the range of hands that they have and, and uh, you know, not following through because you're not sure if, if, they'll, if they'll even fold the very bottom of their, of their uh, calling range. All right, guys. Well, I've been running for 15 minutes, or 15 minutes, so that's that's pretty long. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. It's been a pleasure. Leave me feedback on the forums. Let me know how much you guys like this series. Uh, again, this has been Pocket Air, uh, building the bankroll, uh, building a bankroll series. I will talk to you guys very soon.